channel. For today's video, we have a little bit of an informational video. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys all of my tips for saving on designer items. So this isn't gonna be a video talking about how I save for designer items, like my saving strategy, or like if I get bonuses, how I divide up, what I choose to buy, and all that stuff. It's more so of like, once we have the money set aside and we know what we want, how can we make sure that we get the best deal? So I have several tips to share with you guys that I've been using myself these last couple of years since I've started dabbling more into luxury and like buying design your items and stuff there's definitely things that I think could help I have absolutely no problem paying full price sometimes even over retail if I really really want the item but a lot of the time if I can find a deal or get a deal I'm gonna take a deal because these are very expensive products like why not save ourselves some money if we can if you guys are new around here welcome my name is Andrea I typically do videos all about beauty sometimes some fashion sometimes a little bit of luxury if those are topics that interest you be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and turn on the post notification bell button so you are aware every single time I post a new video. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, starting off with the first tip, I feel like this is the most obvious and when you hear it, people are going to be like, well yeah, of course you're going to do that, but you would be surprised how many people actually don't do this or spend enough time doing this. The number one tip I have for you guys is to do your research. I'm not talking about comparing the price of Gucci sandals on Gucci.com and the sandals on Nordstrom.com and then calling it quits. I'm talking about spending an actual like day or a couple of days or a couple hours researching to make sure that you are comparing everything and you've looked at every possible place where you could purchase this item. I know it sounds tedious and I know it sounds very annoying to do. There's literally been times where I buy something let's say from Gucci.com or from Nordstrom for full price and literally the next day or that afternoon even I see it on a different website and I see it for cheaper or I see it where I could have gotten like 10% off or something like that and when I mean do research I don't just mean price compare I'm talking about actually doing your research to see what other places that maybe you haven't really heard of or that are super mainstream carry the item you want and see if there's a discount available bridges is a really good example of a UK based website it's a hundred percent legitimate it's like a department store in the UK but because of the conversion from pounds to dollars and sometimes depending on what product you get customs are already included sometimes the item Item you want or the item that I was looking at ended up being cheaper buying it from Selfridges in the UK than it was to actually go to like I said the Gucci store or Prada store here and get it here. There's also other websites based in like Australia and other places that maybe you haven't really heard of here, but sometimes really have great deals. Another example of this was my most recent shoe purchase for my birthday. My husband ended up picking up this pair of off-white sneakers for me, and he ended up getting them from a website called 24S. It is a French-based department store, and they were having a sale that off-white here in the US wasn't having, that Nordstrom's wasn't having, that Saks wasn't having, and they were just running it there for 50% off. I ended up getting these sneakers, the exact sneakers I wanted from a legitimate place without any issues and I paid 50% off. If I would have just gone into Nordstrom's or just compared Nordstrom or Saks or the most common department stores that I know here in the US, I probably would have missed out on that big of a deal. I really try to spend the majority of my time when I really get locked into an item that I really want researching that item, seeing where I can get the best deal, seeing where I can buy it, and just making sure that I'm getting the best bang for my buck. My second tip that I have to share with you guys is to exercise patience and wait for a sale if there is going to be a sale. Kind of ties into my first tip about doing your research because in your research, whether it's like YouTube videos, forums for designer goods, or anything like that, you will be able to find information on things like these sales. A lot of designer houses do have sales. Some of them, like Hermes, and Chanel uh, are private sales or even like Yves Saint Laurent are private sales but other stores like Nordstrom, Bergdorf Goodman, Saks, even like Valentino are open to the public or tend to have them along the same time that the designer brand houses tend to have them. So the majority of brands will have a sale. It just depends which luxury house you're looking to shop from and whether their sale is private or open. If that sale is open to the public, or for example, Nordstrom I know has a designer sale usually around May through July on designer shoes. That is open to the public. So if you find information that there's gonna be a designer sale, it might be worth 
worth to wait to see if the item you want goes on sale. You can typically kind of get a sense of what is going to be on sale based on previous sale items, depending on the house itself. So for example, even if you are able to Chanel sale, Chanel will never have classics on sale. Like typically their bags will never go on sale. Um, even like classic shoes won't go on sale. Typically it's like jewelry, accessories, and ready to wear items. Hermes, same thing. Hermes does have a private sale, but they will usually have like twillies or some shoes, seasonal items. It will never be like the really known items. There are other brands like Valentino, Versace, even Saint Laurent that will have some of their popular items like the small Lulu or the camera bag or some of the really popular shoes included in the sale. So it really just depends on which designer house you're looking at and what is the specific item. The reason I say that it's sometimes worth to wait for the sale is because you can get massive savings during this time. I picked up this pair of Valentino boots and I picked these up for 55% off the Valentino website. So these were from the Valentino sale. They were that season's shoe. Uh, they were not used. Nothing was wrong with them. They came with the box and everything directly from Valentino. I got them 55% off because I ended up waiting to see if they were included in the sale. And because we were in the summertime, they were the like winter items that went on sale from that year. And I ended up saving so much money for them. Sometimes I think we get in this idea of like, well, it's my birthday or the holidays are coming or I want it for this. And if you're willing to pay full price because you want it then and there, absolutely. But if it's just an item that you want to check off and you're okay waiting, it might be worth waiting around for those times where you know there's going to be sales. This is a great time to start preparing for that because typically November and December, even up until January, there's a lot of sales happening, whether it's at department stores or the actual boutiques themselves, because it typically happens every six months, you know, in the winter, and then you'll have one in the spring, summer slash um, warm weather type of months. That is a huge way to save yourself some money. Nothing hurts more than when you could have saved yourself some money, but you didn't. My third tip kind of ties into the second and the first one, but another big tip I have for you guys is to use deal hunting sites and pages. One of the websites I like to use is called Karma. This video isn't sponsored by them or anything like that, even though if they wanted to work with me, I am 100% down because I've used them for years. Karma is a really great website because you sign up, like you do your profile, it's absolutely free, and then you can create like wish list of items. You can do like shoe wish list, handbag wish list, whatever you want, and you save picks from different sites. So let's say you see it at Nordstrom, Saks, and Far french.com so you save those items from those websites and karma will update you or send you an email you can even automate like text or if you have the application to have it go to your app and it will notify you when that item goes on sale and you can pick whether it's going to be like five percent or all the way up to fifty percent off and you can also set alerts for when something comes back in stock so have you ever come across an item that you really wanted from a particular store or whatever and it's sold out sign up for restock notifications and before that site even sends you the email for restock, Karma will notify you that it has been restocked or where you can get it somewhere else. So that's a really good tool to use, especially if the item you want is super popular, really high in demand, or you're really trying to score a discount and maybe you can't be, you know, constantly checking or monitoring. That's a great tool to use because you just literally input the information you want and it lets you know when there's a sale or when it's restocked. The tools to follow Instagram pages. So if you go on Instagram and you put like deal hunters, luxury hunters, luxury luxury deals or something like that in the hashtags, you will usually find pages that are dedicated to just scoring designer deals. I will list a bunch that I love to follow here or in the description bar you guys can check out. But I love following their page because they will literally do all of the work for you. Like they will do the one and two for you and just give you the links or give you that information that you need. One of the ones I really like to follow is called Lux Hunt. Lux Hunt is amazing. I bought my pair of Alexander McQueen sneakers this past summer, yeah, on sale because I saw on Lux Hunt's Instagram stories. So those are literally people that spend time doing research and comparing prices and all that and they have notifications or they have contacts with the actual like essays that can get you these stuff. They're pretty much in the know. But it's just another great tool to have if you're looking for something or maybe you want to splurge on something like that. It's really nice to find those pages that are specifically doing that research and that work 
for you and you just get to shop from their page. The fourth tip I have for you guys is to sign up for email lists. I know, I know signing up for emails list and getting those email blasts can be super annoying. It's also a great way to score sometimes a really good discount just by signing up, which you were gonna do anyway if you were gonna shop from that place. I actually did that when I bought my Saint Laurent Uptown Clutch. So I actually picked this up from Net-A-Porter. Yeah, Net-A-Porter. And Net-A-Porter is really great because they do offer 10% off when you're a new customer. So if you sign up with a new email, P.S. you can sign up with different emails and still get that 10% off if you really want to. But yeah, if you sign up with an email, you will get 10%. So I saw this on the Net-A-Porter site. It was sold out everywhere. I signed up for the email list before purchasing this. I waited for my 10% coupon code and I was able to save 10% off this. And 10% may not seem like a lot, but when we're talking about hundreds or even thousands of dollars on designer items, I'm willing to take 10%, even if that's five bucks, 20 bucks, whatever it is, even if it's like free shipping, a savings is a savings. That's another great way too to get in the know for some of these sales. I saw that and um, Yves Saint Laurent and even Versace, I think they will send emails when they have their sale live to their email subscribers first as like an extra benefit and then they will open it up to the public. The fifth tip I have is another one that I feel like is so obvious but I don't feel like a lot of people actually use this or maximize just how much you can get from this. My fifth tip I have for you guys is to use those gift cards. A great example of this is like Nordstrom, Saks Fifth Avenue, Bloomingdale's. A lot of these departments department stores that are more high end sometimes will have designer like boutiques or houses or even the products that they carry in that department store. That is a great way for you to be able to save some money on those items. And I put it in quotes because you're not really getting like a discount. It's not like you're getting 20% off or anything, but using someone else's money or using a gift card instead of using your own is a way better way to go and it kind of hurts a little bit less because you physically don't have to pay out of pocket so much. So many reasons and ways where you can get a gift card and like I said, if you have your eye on something designer and it happens to be at that department store, why not have that person give you a gift card to that department store? So a great example of this is actually last year, my boss gave me a gift card to Nordstrom. She was very generous with our Christmas gifts and so she gave me a couple hundred dollars to Nordstrom. I saved that gift card and then when I saw a pair of sneakers that came in from Chanel, because my Nordstrom carries Chanel. I told my essay I wanted those shoes. He set them aside for me. When they came in, I went, I tried them on, fell in love with them, and I ended up saving myself a couple hundred dollars just because I used the gift card that my boss had given me. I'm doing this as well when it comes to my birthdays or when it comes to Christmas or anything like that, especially with people like my brother or like coworkers or other people who may not know my specific tastes to be able to get me like an actual gift. I love just getting gift cards to some of these department stores because oftentimes I will be able to find something that I want in that department store, whether it's designer or not, it's less money out of my pocket. I'm doing that and I don't know what it is, but I feel like not many people actually do that. Maybe they're just nervous to use a gift card at some of these places or anything like that. But I know my Nordstrom has a Chanel, a Dior, a Gucci, and a Prada. And I've been able to use my Nordstrom card and Nordstrom gift cards and even gift cards to the actual mall itself where those stores are at. I've been able to use it at those boutiques and I've never gotten any issues with that. Number six, along the same lines as gift cards and like saving cash and stuff like that, be sure you are utilizing those cash back rewards that you have, whether it's an external site or whether it is your credit card. And now I know, I know a lot of people are gonna tell you do not buy luxury or designer on credit card, you should be paying it cash, you should be paying it debit card, if you don't have enough, you shouldn't put it on credit. And I absolutely agree. I'm not saying to buy items on a credit card that you have no idea how you're gonna pay for and you just let it sit there and let the interest build. What I'm saying is you have the money ready to spend in your savings account, but your, let's say, Visa credit card gives you 10% back every time you buy something over $500 at Nordstrom, or you're getting, you know, $100 credit if you spend more than $300 on Bloomingdale's. The item you want is sold at one of those stores. Why not get the cash?
cash back benefit from your credit card and then pay it off right away. I always do this at the beginning of the month. I will look at my credit cards and see which credit cards offer which cash back rewards or if they have a specific rewards or anything like that. And then I will just do that. It doesn't even have to be luxury with like simple things you can do that as well. And if you're not doing that, you're literally just missing out on those rewards. I'm doubling up with this as well. So I recently did this with Saks Fifth Avenue. My boss last year gave me a Saks Fifth Avenue gift card. I wanted this pair of earrings from YSL that was there. And my credit card actually offering, I think it was $50 back if you spent over $250. The earrings were $395. I had to spend $250 in order to get $50 cash back. I had a gift card for $200. So $395 minus the $200 gift card I had gotten from my boss leaves us with $195 minus the $50 credit card statement that I was going to get back on my card because the purchase was over $200. That means I paid $145 for these earrings instead of the full $3.95 if I would have gone to YSL.com or if I would have purchased it in store or if I would have purchased it with my debit card instead of my credit card. So that's what I'm talking about. Be savvy with your credit card rewards, with your gift cards, with your cash back because there are certainly ways where you can double up all of those rewards and even get more money back or save yourself some more money. And the last tip I have for you guys is to shop pre-loved if you are trying to get deals on design designer items. Now this isn't going to be the case with all designer items because sometimes in the secondhand market or pre-loved items if they're in high demand they can even run more than the regular retail price. There's certainly those outliers that can happen but more often than not you are able to score a really really good deal and I'm talking hundreds if not thousands off what the retail price will be. Now I completely understand there's some people out there that are like no but I want to get that in-store experience or I want to get the bag or I want to get all of the full stuff or whatever which is totally fine. Especially if you've never purchased luxury it is nice to go into that store and walk out with a bag and everything like that but if you have been purchasing luxury or even if you haven't maybe this is your first purchase but you don't care about that you just want to get a good deal and you want to get the item. Shopping pre-loved is such a good way to go. So this Gucci Dinosis is actually a really really good example of how shopping pre-loved can work out so well in your favor. So this bag now retails for I think 2090 2080 something like that. I was looking at this I think it was like $1,800 or $1,900 without tax. So I was looking for this bag and I really wanted to get this bag but I knew that this was a bag that I could probably find pre-loved because it was an older style and although it is still popular it wasn't as popular as it was a couple of years ago. I at Fashion File which is a great place to get pre-loved items. I've, I've gotten other things from Fashion File as well that I really have enjoyed. With the dust bag it came with the Gucci box as well. The only thing I didn't get by buying this pre-loved from Fashion File instead of going into the Gucci store is the actual Gucci shopping bag. I purchased this pre-loved I think it was $1,300, $1,400 after taxes as compared to $2,000 without taxes right now. Now. So again, you can really save yourself hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars on certain items if you're willing to shop pre-loved. And I'm a huge advocate of shopping pre-loved if the item you want is no longer available or it's really sold out or if you just want to save yourself some money. There's certainly really, really good websites, both you know, actual websites and Instagram pages where you can save yourself a lot of money by shopping pre-loved. All right, you guys, so those are all the tips I have for you guys. Leave it down in the comments or please share with us if you guys have other, other tips or tricks that you use to score designer deals. Like I said, I am more than happy to pay full price, even retail, if I really want the item and it's only over retail at some particular point, but I really try to find myself a deal or make sure that I am maximizing every dollar I can because these are expensive items. And at the end of the day, a savings is a savings. Please share your tips down below if you guys have any and make sure you guys give this video a big thumbs up if you found it useful, informative, or entertaining. Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, all that stuff is gonna be left down below for you guys as well as coupon codes to help you save some money. I will also leave some of those sites I mentioned down below for you guys or frequent places that I shop at. If you have any any questions please leave them down below as well and I will get back to you. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Stay safe and I will see you all in my next one.